guys, welcome back. I am Jason and I am in Pensacola, North Carolina, Camp Miller. And I've met an awesome guy here that's been doing tons of work. You've been up here for how long? Uh, since day one. Since day one, he's been here getting after it, solving problems. This is Adam Zart. Uh, I have a home on Beach Mountain. So my very first supply drop on day one, we moved supplies into a very impoverished area in North, uh, Western North Carolina under threat of arrest. We set up a hub, we got fuel to the community. Uh, everything was going great for the first eight or nine days. The community leader reached out to me on day eight or nine and said, hey, FEMA set up a camper behind our uh, supply depot. They haven't gotten out of their campers in three days. <laughs> Um, they haven't helped. They're just watching us. I'm afraid of what's going to come next. The next night, she called me. I was on my way back from Black Mountain, and she said, FEMA just came in and moved all of my employees out by order of the federal government and seized all of our supplies wow. and moved them out the side door. Um, we have no idea where those supplies went. Um, my wife and I spent a day or two making go bags to hike into the hollers because at that time, the hollers were inaccessible, so you needed skilled backpackers to go in with mm -hmm. it. They took all that. We have no idea where it went. Crazy. Wow. Um, so that's crazy. That is a real confirmed report from my real contact. That yeah, because you that hear area. a lot of stories. Yeah. Yep. And you don't know what to believe, but yeah, that's great to hear it. Yep. Directly um, from you. The other one I've got, this was, there's still people missing. Um, there's a lot of dogs in the area, but unfortunately a lot of the search and rescue dogs are not solely trained on cadaver work. They're multi-purpose dogs for whatever purpose. Um, but they give alerts and a lot of those alerts are false. Mm -hmm. The issue we're running into is where these dogs are giving alerts are in very treacherous areas to try to clear debris. Um, the amount of tension under the trees in these areas, these debris piles, you need expert chainsaw people there. And right now we've just got people like me and you. Guys. Yeah, we've just got guys that- Fellas ready to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah know yeah. how to use a chainsaw. Yeah, the risk to reward is- Yeah, like, you know, you get one tree laying this way and one tree laying this way and then another one laying on top of it. And sometimes they get, they get loaded with tension and you don't know until you start cutting into one what's going to happen. And, and you might think it's going to go this way, but really the tension's pushing it that way. Yep. And, it, you know, thousands of pounds of force could just wipe you off. I don't know how much a <laughs> yeah. mini excavator weighs, but we had a mini excavator pushing down on the trees while we were cutting them yeah. to try to keep the tension under control. And it started to lift the mini excavator up off the ground. Yeah. So I don't know how much pressure that is, but it was, it was enough to worry me and go yeah. get my med kit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Crazy stuff. Any other any other uh, interesting things that have happened since you've been here? People might be interested in um, important information. Any lessons learned? Yeah. I, I, I really liked it to uh, end videos like this with lessons learned, like something that we can take away from this experience and maybe hopefully prevent some sort of uh, loss in the future. Yeah, Anything absolutely. Like that? Um, obviously preparation saves. Uh, being prepared for anything is, is super helpful. I mm -hmm. consider myself very prepared and I've had situations out here where I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So sleeping bags out here right now, a lot of people want to come help. You have, especially this time of year, you don't know how cold it's gonna get at night. You need a Arctic bag. You need something that's geared for 20 degrees and under. I actually screwed up and on my last deployment up here, left my Arctic bag back home and just borrowed a bag that was 40 degrees and <laughs> I almost froze to death. <laughs> oh, I spent gosh. about eight hours trying to stop shivering and maybe 30 minutes yeah. uh, sleeping. Yeah, yeah. So stuff if like that. If your bag is rated for 40 degrees, that means that you're gonna survive, <laughs> yes. but you will not be comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that that's a good lesson learned. The yeah. other thing is footwear up here. Yes. Uh, the ground is nasty, everything's dirty. We don't know what's in the dust and in the mud. Um, having wet feet up here, especially with the chemicals and debris that's in the ground, can cause a lot of issues. So you want to have muck boots on, you want to have changes of socks, uh, wool socks, something that you can dry out real quick right. and vents well. Um, and you also want to have uh, your own like cold and flu stuff on you, the season's changing. Um, getting a headache, having a runny nose, that's not helping you or anybody up here. You're right. spreading germs and things. Yeah, Bring yeah. hand sanitizer, um, that type of stuff. Okay. And be safe. Work diligently, yeah. but be smart. Uh, slow is Slow smooth, down you know? a little bit. Yep. Think before you act. Yeah, when we first got up here, it was like every cowboy came up here ready to rock with their chainsaw and their side by side, and they were get, like eager, which is awesome. Yep. Like, fantastic. But that's how you end up 
becoming part of the problem and not part of the solution. So yeah, slow down a little bit. Like think before you act. Yeah. Um, before we go, can I talk about an area? I don't know if have you guys been to Craigtown? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. I don't think so. So <laughs> Craig, Craigtown's new. It's off. Pardon me if I get it wrong. I think it's Glen Creek. So Camp Miller uses me a lot because of my off-road capabilities and the vehicle I'm in and the wheelbase. They send me out on scouting missions mm-hmm. a lot. So last weekend they sent me to, I believe it was Glen Creek to scout. And I thought I was going to a town. I found a road named Glen Creek Road. I found a creek and I followed it just out past Asheville. I followed it around for maybe five or 10 miles and it was beautiful. I was like, there is no devastation over here. I was having to look hard to find anything. Eventually I turn a corner and I mean, there is 40 foot mudslide debris piles on the right side of the road. And it's not just a pile, it's as far as you can see for two miles. It's the remnants of a mile and a half long mudslide that came through that valley. Uh, Geologists said it collected two other mudslides. And when it came through, it took out the entire family for the most part of the Craigs. So they just renamed it Craigtown. Um, 11 family members of the Craigs died. The fire chief was actually saving one of the Craig family members and the second mudslide came in and took the fire chief Mm -hmm. out. So it was a devastating story, but there's a bow on top because when I was there, I found it on day 29. And the Mississippi Game and Wildlife guy said on day 28, they started clearing the debris pile right there where the family had been. So they hadn't heard a noise nothing in 28 days they started clawing into the pile with an excavator and when they opened it up they heard a dog crying no way wow. yeah here there i've got pictures of it and i can give them to you guys yeah. but there's a dog kennel that had the dog was in a fridge had fallen and landed on it and protected it from the house collapsing wow and the dog had been living on rats and water that had been f- continually flowing from the slide wow. through there for 28 days My that's crazy gosh. yeah they got him out they got him adopted he was fine that's so that's cool a really cool story wow yeah. that is crazy that's a long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's another story in that same spot. So the game and wildlife guys told me this as well. There's only one house left standing in that valley. And apparently where that mudslide started, there was a house right there. Mm-hmm. And that house came down the, in the mudslide. The lady who lives in the home at the bottom of the valley that's still there, she heard the mudslide coming and opened the back door and saw what was coming down the mountain, shut the door and ran to the other side of the house to take shelter. And she said within about two minutes, all the noise stopped. There was nothing. Her house was still there. So she got up, walked into the kitchen, and there was a young man in her kitchen. That young man was in the house a mile and a half up in the mudslide. And when the house got down, there was an apple tree in her front yard. I've got a picture and video of this as well. The mudslide uh, caught the house on that apple tree and directed the mudslide around wow. her house. Wow. And it parted the sea. Yep, and it ejected the kid out the front door oh. onto her patio. No. Yep, and he walked Wait. right into her front door. Wow. Oh, my <laughs> yeah, God. super wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. The debris piles are just unheard of. We're in the area trying to get some intel. Uh, thankfully, we found a ranger that's helping us out over here. But this entire valley, this house was saved by another house that got tied around a tree here and rerouted all the mudslide damage. Um, But you can see, this mudslide goes for a long ways. We drove for probably a mile through this. Man, and there's so many stories like that that we just haven't even heard yet. So So, I've never seen anything like this up here. Never seen flooding. I mean, I've seen flooding. I lived in South Florida for a long time. Flooding is a thing, normal not like this this was like a a wall of destruction that nothing could stop i grew up in iowa and i was uh i grew up on the mississippi river and i was there when they had a thousand year flood on the mississippi and helped with cleanup and it had nothing on this really yeah i mean yeah there was stuff flooded and damaged but i mean here the entire mountains fell yeah you know i've I've seen mountains in towns i mean out on the Cane River, we were talking about this last night. There's no road on either side. There used to be a two-lane road on each side. Gone. Now there's nothing. Yeah, it just, it, just, it looks like you're at the Grand Canyon or you're in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, it's, landscapes are so different now. Yeah. yeah, it's insane. We saw a couple mudslides, smaller ones. I mean, they're huge, but yeah. smaller ones on the way in. It's just like you said. Like you look up at the at the the peak of this hilltop, this mountaintop, and just the like, one whole side of it just slipped away, and it's, it's just yeah. bare rock now. It's, the craziest thing is the amount of divine intervention I've seen up here. Yeah. Every yeah. time I need something, I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And somebody requests, hey, I need a high ropes guy. Yeah. 
That yeah. happened yesterday. Yeah. I walked into camp. I was like, where am I ever going to find a high rope skilled guy? that In, in rural North what? Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> I walked into camp and there was a guy standing right here with a rigging company. And that's yeah. what he does for and a living. And you saw his hat. Right? Yeah, I saw his hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he is labeled. Yep. I've got chills right now thinking about it. So there's so many cool stories of that. We had, uh, I think it was on day two, we were doing uh, wellness checks and search and rescue in Beach Mountain, and we ended up uh, in Valley Crucis. And we had 10 off-road trucks, we had fresh bodies, and we were driving down the road, and up the road we could see these people on the back of their trucks on the other side of a river where there used to be a bridge, and they were just defeated, crying, heads in their hands. Mm. And uh, we pulled up, and my wife got to talking to the lady, and she said we were praying to God we would get some manpower to help us. We saw you coming down the road and we just prayed it was for us. And I'm not kidding you, as soon as we stopped, four generators showed up and they had just finished a makeshift bridge out of an I-beam and we were able to hand carry all the generators in. So the community, there was uh, 10 families that lived back there. We were able to get power to all 10 families on day two, again, by divine intervention. Yeah, that's yeah. All, so awesome. Yeah, yeah, so many stories of that and it just is amazing. When you need a thing, it just shows up. It does. Yeah, yep. it's been so great. Yeah, everyone here is awesome. Everybody I've worked with has been so fantastic. And it everyone's is. just volunteering. No one's making any money off this stuff. It's no, not at all. Losing a lot of money, yeah. actually. It's just strong backs <laughs> and good hearts. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly that's right. It. So every time I come up here, I just kind of, I, I pray that, that opportunities present themselves whatever they look like i mean i don't i don't know what they're going to look like it's always a surprise like today yes. i might be driving a dump truck yes i don't i don't know <laughs> so <laughs> so i just i really enjoy that i think god gives us these gifts and abilities and the eagerness to go go out and do these things for a reason certainly i've yeah. got an eagerness to help yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and the it's sense so of adventure selfless. along with it, it yeah really exactly is. so so that's really cool it's awesome meeting you thank you very that's much great. Man. Yeah. i really appreciate you sharing yeah, yeah. amazing yeah, absolutely let's go get to work yeah <laughs>